Good evening. I'm political editor Dennis Waltz, and this is Politics Unplugged. Governor Katie Hobbs is now settling into her office on the ninth floor of the state capitol and beginning the work to lead Arizona for the next four years. I sat down with her this week for a wide-ranging interview, touching on topics like education, water policy, and how to get along with a Republican-led legislature. Well, thank you very much for having us up here, Governor. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you've got a lot going on. You've got a budget coming out. You just, you know, uh, did your state of the state address. So um, I want to start our conversation today. Like, this is the first time in years we're, we're going to see divided government mm -hmm. here in yeah. Arizona. Um, tell us, like, from your perspective, what does that mean? What's your relationship with the Republicans, Republican leaders mm -hmm. down there? Um, what is that like? What are the conversations been? Um, it's going to be challenging. I don't think anyone uh, disagrees with that. Uh, but we have challenging issues to tackle. And uh, I met with Speaker Toma and President Peterson, and I'm very encouraged by that conversation. We all recognize that um, we're going to have to work together to get any of our priorities through. Um, I think they understand that, and I think they're willing to, to find common ground. Um, and I think their cha their biggest challenge is going to be their caucuses. Yeah, what kind of you know issues did you discuss, and what kinds of common ground is there is there a possibility for? I mean, we kept it really away from issues, but just uh, just under like starting from a base level of understanding that we have to work together. So, um, and I and I you know I said I just brought up the fact you know I've been talking to people across the state about housing affordability, um, education, water, and and so just you know touched very. Um, high level, n nothing specific on those issues. Yeah, and we can drill down a little bit more on that because you have spent a, a, a lot of the energy so far talking about those issues. Mm -hmm. But you've also sent a pretty clear message to the legislature. You told them, like, you know, if you're going to start chasing conspiracy mm -hmm. theories, start pushing agendas, that's going nowhere. Yep. I did want to unpa unpack that just a little bit. Yeah. Um, conspiracy theories, obviously, it's people are probably talking, about, you know you're talking about elections mm -hmm. and denialism yeah. and whatnot. What about agendas? What, what, what kinds of things it, are you talking about there that is going to go nowhere? Well, I mean, that's why we, uh, right out the gate, created the election uh, mm -hmm. reform, or I can't remember the name of it, the, ref the election task force, mm -hmm. the bipartisan election task force. So we can talk about real issues in our elections that we need to address and, mm -hmm. and common sense solutions for those things. I'm hopeful that we get appointments to that um, from reasonable folks that, that understand the real issues we're facing, um, not these made-up things that... Uh, p frankly, losers from this last election continue to push. Yeah, and uh, the agendas, pushing agendas, uh, are you talking about uh, abortion agendas, anything else like that that's just well, we're no go? Well, we're seeing a lot of bills uh, yeah. about, um, uh, I guess, culture war issues um, that are not real problems that people talk to me about on the campaign trail. Um, and, you know, I think those are things that I, I, I mean, we're still working on, uh, I mean, I don't want to comment on specific legislation, but I'm certainly mm -hmm. not going to sign into law a bill that outlaws uh, drag queens or mm -hmm. um, things that are not real issues that people are talking about. Yeah, I mean, they've already started, like, you know, at 40. So one, but, um, you know, one issue that you made central to your state of the state address mm -hmm. was education. Yep. And there are several proposals now mm -hmm. to deal with um, the spending ga cap on that. That's that 1980 mm -hmm. voter approved spending cap yep. that limits how much money you can spend. Um, without that being lifted this year, it's $1.3 million a billion dollars that schools have to cut. It could force yep. some schools to close. Yep. Have you taken a look at any of those proposals? Um, and are you going to call a special session to get this done? Well, I think it's it's a really simple answer, and I don't know that we actually need to look at the proposals. We we this is Groundhog Day. We did this last year, went right up to the to the limit, and so legislators who pushed back on that part of the say the state and said, well, we need to look at this. We don't. We know what we need to do. We need to suspend the cap, mm -hmm. um, and then come up with a permanent solution so we're not in this situation every single year. It's a resolution. It can be brought to the floor today and passed today. And. Um, has there been any talk to because you also talked about more ca more investment in, mm -hmm. in capital construction mm -hmm. and maintenance and areas like that. Yep. Where are we with that? Because you it also mentioned that ongoing lawsuit, mm -hmm. too. Where are you with that right now? Uh, so we have um, the last week worked with Attorney General Mays to end that litigation. And so you'll see that 
um, our commitment to funding those capital needs reflected in the budget that we put out tomorrow. Okay, and do you think that's going to have some buy-in from Republicans? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Otherwise, we're stuck I mean, back in litigation. Yeah, I mean, that's going to yeah. be the question all year, yeah. right? Like, can yeah. you get that kind of buy-in yeah. from there? And it, it, it does seem like, you know, uh, you're getting some Republicans are, you know, with the spending uh, mm -hmm. cap. Maybe they've, they've proposed some legislation, mm -hmm. including T.J. Shope has proposed his stuff. So is yep. that a good sign? For, are you taking that as a good sign that you can work with some of these folks? Yes, absolutely. Um, on the same hand, though, mm -hmm. I mean, someone like T.J. Shope told me last week he was went back to your inaugural fund. Mm -hmm. and he says, this is something we, we may have to look into. We need to look at how much contributions, um, it, you know, was taken for this inaugural fund. If, if, if that happens, if they move down that road, and it's not just T.J. Shope mm -hmm. that told me that, other Republicans have said that maybe that's something they want to do. Um, would you cooperate with them in that? Uh, absolutely. I don't know what they're trying to chase. We've been above and beyond what's required by law in terms of disclosure. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it's fine. We don't have anything to hide. Sure. Uh, and again, yeah, you're legally, mm -hmm. you're not required to disclose anything. Mm -hmm. You disclose uh, the donors. You just haven't disclosed the amounts that they've given. I mean, I understand legally. The question then for a lot of Republicans and people want to know is why are you choosing not to disclose all that? Uh, we have done above and beyond what's required. Um, so I, you know, they can chase an investigation, but there's nothing to investigate. Okay. Okay. Um, and let's get back like to uh, uh, the Senate. You know, Senate mind, uh, majority put out their proposal of this, uh, their of their priorities mm -hmm. this year. Um, that, you know, the Republicans have put out, have sent out their, their their priorities out there. What have you seen from coming from Republicans that you're looking at going, I can work with them on this? Um, you know, I think um, there are proposals that go above what I talked about in both, on both the campaign and in the state of the state about affordability. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely willing to entertain those. Um, the, you know, there's concerns around um, cities that rely on some of that revenue. So how do we how do we address that uh, and 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 hold those cities harmless? So those are the discussions that we need to have. And I was uh, digging through that just the other day. One of the things Republicans want to do is they want to start socking away more run money into the rainy mm -hmm. day fund. Is that do you think at this point, I mean, considering all your other priorities, is that something that you would support? Uh, yes, I think you'll see that in our budget. Uh, yeah, that's coming yeah. out tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Right, right. And and so um, and another thing they're, they're also calling for, like you, you called for uh, the end to like the sales tax on feminine hygiene products mm -hmm. and on diapers and whatnot. What they're also looking at doing is getting rid of the rental tax, mm -hmm. uh, getting uh, rid of the food tax that some cities impose uh, on their residents. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Because that was a specific proposal by your opponent in the campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your thoughts about th doing this legislatively now that you're governor? Yeah, I mean, again, those th those are some of those things that we have to have those conversations about. Certainly welcome all ideas to the table that make things more affordable, um, but having to deal with the revenue impact on cities. And in some cases uh, where you have that rental tax that's a dedicated revenue source, you're actually proposing to defund the police or other public safety, and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we need to look at those. Um, and actually, um, does elimination of the rental tax address the for affordable housing crisis in a meaningful way? And I don't know that it does. And more from